Hey guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and today we're going to talk about a topic that I think probably every fish keeper has dealt with at some point or another um, in keeping aquariums and that's cyanobacteria. Now cyanobacteria has a lot of common names from smudge algae to slime algae to blue-green algae but the reality is it's not an algae at all, it's a bacteria. And it is found in every type of water, freshwater, saltwater, brackish water. And there's a ton of different species. And this is an organism that has been around from the time of the dinosaurs. And it can be, well, to be honest, it's the bane of my existence. Uh, it seems to have many causes. It seems to show up out of nowhere. And it is not the easiest thing to treat. Blue-green algae uses light to photosynthesize which is unique and that's because it's a bacteria and it can seemingly as I said show up out of nowhere now if you're new here I have a lot of aquariums and one of the things that I do is I use a central pump to power sponge filters so the filtration in the vast majority of my tanks is identical I also utilize long strip lights uh, to light multiple tanks at once in order to reduce my energy output as well as to have really consistent lighting and stable conditions for my aquariums. So I have entire rows of aquariums that utilize identical filtration, identical tank size, identical lighting. They're all planted with the same rough density. They're all set up identically. And what's really weird about cyanobacteria is it will pick one of those aquariums seemingly showing up out of nowhere and be a pervasive, consistent problem. Now, cyanobacteria is kind of interesting. Uh, it forms these, like, you'll see it first show up as sort of like a dust, usually in the corners of the aquarium, at the base of the substrate, and very, very quickly it forms these sheets that cover anything, your plants, your substrate, your glass, your driftwood. Uh, trapping air bubbles and blocking light that the plants need in order for them to photosynthesize, grow, and live. Uh, it is very easy to remove. It, you can pull it off in big sheets and um, clean it up that way. And there's a ton of products on the market that are designed specifically to target this blue-green algae. But the thing to remember about treating symptoms is that it's exactly that. When you're treating a symptom, you're not getting rid of the cause. So the problem with a lot of the products on the market or a lot of the strategies to deal with cyanobacteria is while they do get rid of it, it'll just come back if you don't address what caused it to show up in the first place. And this is what I find really confusing, especially in my fish room. I do a lot of water changes. I keep my tanks really clean. Again, I have the same lighting, same filtration on every aquarium, but it only shows up in one particular aquarium in my fish room, and it has for the past 15 years. I even broke this aquarium down. It was in storage for almost a year. It was dry, wiped out clean, completely sterilized, set back up, and it's back. So why does it appear? There's lots of different theories. Excess light, excess nutrients, not enough nitrate, too much nitrate. Uh, too much phosphate, not enough circulation, and I've shown you guys in the past on, my, on a 75 gallon that by increasing my flow, I was able to get rid of cyanobacteria in one of my aquariums. However, in this particular aquarium, it just keeps coming back. I have tried using substrate, not using substrate, heavily planted, lightly planted, and it just keeps coming back, and it's truly the bane of my existence with this aquarium. Now, the good news is, is it isn't harmful to fish. Uh, but it is unsightly, it is a pain in the butt, and it is problematic for plants as it covers them, and again, they can't get the light that they need in order to grow properly. The other thing is, is that nothing eats it. This is an algae. Snails don't eat it, shrimp don't eat it, fish don't eat it, so it really just takes hold and spreads super fast. So there's a bunch of products on the market. Um, you know, it's well known that antibiotics, erythromycin or maricin, work quite well to treat cyanobacteria. But again, this is treating a symptom, not the cause. And I, you guys know, if you've been around, that I do not like using medications. It's horrible for the environment. Uh, when we flush our wastewater, it, it gets into our water supplies. It's not good for our fish. 
uh, builds up antibiotic resistance. It's not good for our biofilter because those uh, antibiotics aren't, they don't discriminate between what kind of bacteria they kill. You know, so it'll kill your good bacteria as well as this bad bacteria equally, which means it can affect the nitrogen cycle in our aquariums. Very dangerous thing to play with. There's things like Chemiclean, which is designed to kill uh, red algae in marine aquariums. Um, I believe it's some sort of antibiotic derivative. I don't really understand how it works. It's not as bad as using straight up antibiotics. Um, it does work well. I've used it a lot in the past, but today we're going to try something new. And now this video is going to be a marathon, not a sprint, because this treatment protocol takes a month. So in doing my research about cyanobacteria over the years, I've read a lot of different treatments, uh, antibiotics, hydrogen peroxide, changing flow, dosing nitrates, using phosphate scrubbers, um, using Chemiclean, but recently I stumbled across a product called Dr. Tim's Waste Away. And when I was listening to his information and reading his information, it sounds like it's a really solid approach. And that what this does is it adds beneficial bacteria to the aquarium that will eat the excess organics that feed the algae um, and also help balance your aquarium. Now, Dr. Tim is well known to be an expert in bacteria and aquariums. He has quite the scientific resume and has published a ton of papers on these topics. So while a lot of times I think some of the products sold as supplements for our aquariums are basically snake oil, he has document, documented papers uh, showing his research, so I'm willing to give it a try. Um, and this should be... I mean, this is a totally natural approach, meaning there's no medications I'm adding. It's just bacteria. It's similar to the thought process of adding the BTIs in uh, standing water to eat or to help with mosquito larva or adding something like um, larva to your fields to eat fly larva so that, you know, using fly pest predators, it's a natural approach to dealing with issues on farms. Um, so I really like the idea of this. So today we're going to start the treatment, but you'll have to be subscribed with that notification bell on to get the follow-ups to this. Again, it's going to take a month, and I wanted to share the process with you. So basically, we start with a manual removal as much of the algae as possible and a good water change. This is standard protocol for treating anything and just good practice to boot. Up next, we will then dose a half dose of this product, which is um, two, cap fill, two capfuls per 10 gallons. So we'll do one capful to the aquarium. You wait two to three days, you dose it again. You wait two to three days, you dose it again. And you dose every two to three days for two weeks. And at the end of a month's period, the cyanobacteria should be gone. The bacterial colony should be stabilized and equalized, and the problem should be over. I'm excited to see if it works. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have tried these products. Um, I'll also make sure to link to the, an affiliate code that I get a commission should you try it. This video is not sponsored. I've never met Dr. Tim. I don't really know if these products will work, but it sounds like a really solid thing to try. As always, I want to hear from you guys. Um, and thank you, as always, for your continued support.